let's uh, let's pray. Um, let's um, let's just ask the Lord to speak to us this morning. Uh, maybe you can just go ahead and uh, pray in the spirit, pray in tongues. We know praying in tongues edifies us in the inner man. So go ahead and do that. We know praying in tongues, we speak the mysteries of God. Um, so let's do that. Um, we know that when we pray in the spirit, we um, we pray the will and the purpose of God. Sometimes we do not know what we ought to pray for, but then the Holy Spirit, he makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So we are actually praying, you know, um, what the Holy Spirit wants, what God wants. So let's let's pray. Um, 3 John 2, uh, when we pray in the Spirit, we are building ourselves up on the most holy faith. So let's do that. Okay, let's uh, let's pray. Shrimati Papa Papa. Oh, Mose Baby Papa. But just for a couple of minutes, you know, let's just continue to pray strong, just press in for more of God. And um, just declare our dependence on God and say, God, I just need you from the depths of my heart, God, the core of my being, oh God, we just, I just cry out and say that I need you, God, I need you more than anything else. Um, yes, Lord, it's just, Lord, acknowledge you're like the very air we breathe, God, we just need it, we just need, need you, God. Oh, bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, God. Yes, Lord, you you know, God, that we cannot exist apart from you, God. God, when we are disconnected from the from the wine, oh God, we know that branches are withered and uh, unfruitful, and incapable of producing fruit, incapable, incapable of thriving. And so, Lord, we acknowledge that. It's your life that flows in us. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, Shima Tere Mosikere. Here it is, Shikere Mosim and Tere Mosipa, Papa Robos, Sepere, Peter and Here Mosipa, Papa. Here Mosim and Tere Mosipere. Oh God, we just uh, we just ask for clarity, God. Focus. Here it is, Mosikere 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 Mosin Tere Mosipa, Papa. Lord, we just ask for rest in the inner man, God. Let every confusion of the soul, let every uh, tempest and storms and uh, chaos in the soul realm, soulish realm, oh, just speak peace to it. We just declare peace over it. Let the, let the peace of the Prince of Peace, uh, which we have uh, dwelling on the inside of us, because greater is he who dwells in us than he that is in the world. So let this peace just overshadow everything. And so with the authority that you've given us, we speak peace, we declare peace. We see and we say, be still in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You are the anchor for our soul, God. You are our sure foundation, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. We give you praise, O oh Father God. 
Yes, Lord, we just declare that with you, that we are more than conquerors, oh Father God. Yes, Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And so, God, we walk in truth. We walk in the light. And we walk with the life of God in, in of, in, inside of us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that we are more than conquerors through you, Father God, who leads us in a triumphant procession in Christ Jesus. Lord, we declare that we are seated with you in the heavenly places, oh God. We thank you for lifting us up, oh God. Yes, Lord, when you died, we died, oh God. When you rose again, oh God, we rose again, oh Father God. We thank you for the new life that we have, oh Master, the new identity that we have in you, God. We thank you, oh Father God, for the authority that you vested in us. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you vested in us, God. We thank you for the anointing, oh God, that is upon each of us, God. We thank you for the calling, oh God, that each of us have uniquely, oh God, as uh, members of the body of Christ, oh God, each with a, maybe a different role, a different function, oh God, but in the body of Christ, we thank you. We thank you for the call that each one of us have. None of us, oh God, are without it, oh Master. And Lord, I pray... Lord, you, even as you are our shepherd, that you will speak, O oh God. And even as we are privileged to hear your voice, O oh Master, we pray that you would sharpen our hearing, God. Sharpen our hearing in the spirit of Father God. Yes, Lord, um, what the spirit of God is saying, Lord, may we have those ears to hear, Father God, right now. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Lord, we, we give you all the praise, Lord. We give you all the glory at this time, O oh Master, even as we submit ourselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, good morning, everyone who joined in. Um, a little while ago. So, yeah, let's, um, let's start off. Um, we, last class, we... We looked at um, uh, the kind of leadership that the Lord Jesus modeled for us, and uh, today we are going into um, you know uh, another aspect of leadership, another important uh, you know in another important uh, uh, aspect or element that the leader should uh, possess, and uh, and which is um, which is vision, right? So we're going to look at that. Okay, so when we uh, look at the term vision. Right. Uh, let me just put it on the chat. Um, we normally consider the word the word uh, vision. Right. We see it is um, it is the faculty or the ability to see. Right. That's what it generally means. It just means the ability to see, um, the natural ability to see. But it's also the the mental ability, or um, the ability to think about, use imagination and use wisdom to think about or to plan to see what the future is, what the future could be. Okay, so that's the general uh, definition uh, or meaning of what the vision is. Uh, but when we talk about, of course, we also know that um, uh, spiritually, that uh, the God is, uh, God pours out his spirit upon us. And when he pours out his spirit upon us, it talks about several things happening. And it says, you know, about dreams that uh, people will see dreams, will have dreams and will see visions, right? And that is something that we see as well. The, uh, so that is a, a spiritual encounter with God in order to where God um, gives us a vision or in, enables us to see something uh, in the spiritual, uh, he, he, what he chooses to reveal, right? So that's, that's again, what we call as a vision. Um, but when we are talking about, uh, the vision that we are talking about here is, uh, is something that, um, uh, that God shows us and, uh, and which we capture and probably write down uh, and, uh, uh, and, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, maybe pen it down, write it down. And it is something that communicates, right? it, something that speaks, something that declares something. And it's a, it's a reminder over and over again for us. Now, uh, it's, it's important because it communicates purpose, right? Purpose for, for, our, for ourselves. Maybe individually, if you say, what is my life vision? Then it communicates the purpose for our lives personally, individually. Um, but if you if you look at the organization or the ministry or the church, it communicates the purpose of that um, of the church of the ministry of the organization. It is you know futuristic. You know it it focuses on the future, 
right? It's looking into the future and says, okay, this is what um, I want to be, or this is what we'd like to become, or this is what we'd like to do. It, it has uh, a futuristic um, uh, futuristic direction, you know, it's, it's future, uh, it's looking into the future, focuses on the future. And uh, importantly, more importantly, it's also a call to action. It's an, also an invitation to act on that, to act so that one can move towards uh, the future, you know, move towards the accomplishment of the vision, right? So um, let me share the notes, um, share the screen. Okay. So we see that uh, it's a description, okay, of uh, you individually or maybe your church or ministry, uh, what we will do or what we will become. Okay, it's a description of that. So it is it is forward looking. It is futuristic in nature. It is um, it 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 shows the why or you know uh, what the reason for our existence, right? The reason why an organization exists. The reason why um, um, the, uh, the church exists. Right. So it um, it communicates the purpose. It it gives the purpose for the church and uh, or organization ministry whatever and it is also a call to action right so since it communicates that it's a call to action so um you know three important questions um are are there within that vision you know it uh, it communicates something okay it communicates what what we want to do um or become right so uh, what what we want to do or what we want to become okay so what we want to do, right? It's it's looking at okay, this is what we we want to do. This is what we want to become eventually, right? And it also, uh, in a big way, communicates the purpose, right? So the purpose is why do we want to do that? Uh, describes you know uh, the activities that we're doing, mainly the missions and the values. You know what what is our ideal? What is it that that we want to lift up high? our principles, our guiding principles, and so on. So it talks about the why as well. And it talks about uh, the the how, right? Uh, which means the goals and objectives and activities, right? So, so three things uh, which follow the vision. So we're going to talk about the vision, we're going to talk about the mission, and we're also going to talk about the, you know, the goals or, or objectives, right? Um, so when we talk about vision, we see that uh, you know, there's a, 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 a scripture, Proverbs 29 and verse 18, which talks about the danger of uh, not having a vision, okay, or danger of not having, or not following, or not being guided by uh, a vision. Right. So, so this is this is the verse, right? Proverbs 29 and verse 18, which says, "Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint." But happy is he who keeps the law. Okay. So the word used there is revelation. And, and in the old King James, um, the word used there, uh, it's translated as vision, okay, which means uh, sight, but it's something to do with, uh, with the mind. And, uh, where there is no oracle or when there is no mental vision, um, then people perish. Right. It says the people perish. People actually uh, come to a place of uh, perishing, right? And it's so serious, right? People cast off restraint, and it, and if if you look at it, that is what a vision does, which means a vision actually um, gives purpose, and vision is guiding, and uh, and the vision also uh, enables people to to keep within the bounds or no not go beyond certain uh, certain lines and and so uh, fulfill and so not fall away and so not perish right um, so it's uh, it's a, it's an important uh, it's an it's an important aspect of life uh, vision now you know some of us might uh, you know might find it uh, repelling you know maybe some of us think that i don't want to be driven by 
it. I don't want to have, uh, you know, anybody telling me, you know, what my vision is. And, and uh, you know, maybe we, we get put off by that thing itself. Okay, this is the way it seems to be very uh, constraining. It seems to be, you know, put you seems to be putting you in a box and saying, you know, I'm, I want to color beyond that. You know, I, I'm meant to do that, etc. Uh, but the thing is that vision is not supposed to, uh, you know, it's not constraining in any way, except that it gives you uh, the freedom Right. The vision gives you the freedom. Vision gives you the focus. Vision gives you the uh, the the direction, right? And it is liberating, right? It is liberating because it lib uh, you know just like um, uh, any other aspect of God's word. Uh, when God gives you a vision, he he gives it with freedom. He gives it not to put us on a leash, but um, but so that we might focus. We might be able to. We might not perish. Right? We, we, that we don't go off, that we don't, um, uh, you know, that we fulfill our destiny. Right? So that is God's plan. That is God's purpose. So, um, so if there is no clarity in that, you know, we might put our efforts, we might put our, or invest our time, and uh, we might even go off on a direction which is, uh, which is, which we are not meant to go. You know, but again, I just want to say that God gives a lot of uh you know uh, there's a lot of uh, checks that god gives in our spirit you know if we are uh, truly if our, our heart's posture is truly to follow him to please him and and wanting to do that even if momentarily we lose a sense of that right god always brings us back God always brings us back. So, um, so there is um, God. There, you know, there, there is the assurance that God, you know, that you will bring me back. But if we, let's say, if we make it our pattern, our lifestyle, uh, to live a life of rebellion, you know, intentionally living in sin, intentionally living a life of rebellion, or even um, you know, a, a place of neglect and ignorance, then there is every chance that we might go off, like on a tangent, and then. You know, the thing is that we, we lose a lot of time um, in coming back, right? So uh, vision is a good thing, okay? Um, so if those of us who are saying, I find it constraining, you know, it, it's a good thing. Right? A, a word of God is, doesn't ever constrain us. The truth of God's word uh, never, ever constrains us. And whatever he, he chooses to reveal to us and whatever he gives us, um, it, is, um, it is for freedom. Right, he he. The truth always leads us to freedom, uh, but freedom to not destroy ourselves. Freedom to fulfill the destiny that He's given us. Freedom to to lead maybe the ministry, the church, the organization into all that you know we were meant to be collectively as a body. So it's a good thing, right? And where there is no vision, the people perish. Right, the destiny of people um, uh, hangs in balance. So we would it we would do well. To um, to establish and to to make clear what is what it is that God wants us to be doing. Okay, um, uh, we will talk about a, a few more things later. But uh, let's look at um, you know uh, some of the characteristics of vision. So a clear vision provides direction and guidance. So it shows us okay, this is the, the way I need to go, and so and this is also uh, the guidance that is required. So I I go at it. I put all my you know, resources, my talents, my abilities, and time, and everything behind it, and I, you know, put that effort in. Right? A clear vision also brings light in the sense there is clarity. There is clarity. Uh, it's again tied to what we shared just now. It, it brings clarity. It brings clarity to the to the steps that I need to take. It brings clarity to the you know maybe uh, even the strategies that I need to formulate. It brings clarity to every action. Right, uh, a, a clear vision. Right? Um, so this is what we see: Matthew six, twenty-two, twenty-three. Um, the Lord Jesus, He says, "The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, the whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that?" darkness okay uh, so comparing to physical vision uh, this goes beyond physical vision right uh, physical vision yes we know that uh, if um, if uh, our physical vision is uh, you know it 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 um, comes down decreases or it is not there then 
then there is darkness there is trouble there is a challenge right um but here if uh, if you are unable to see you know if you are unable to even understand you know that is what it means it's it, it, if you look at the verses following that it talks about you know if the blind lead the blind and so on so um the thing is that uh, god wants us to have clarity in seeing in understanding uh, our purpose right that's um, yeah let me just uh, look at that us um yeah um i'm sorry it, it uh, here he doesn't talk about the blind leading the blind it's about um, he, he shares this after uh, saying that okay do not lay up for treasures uh, where on earth right so so the thing is um, just like the physical eye which give, enables us to see you know a, a clear vision in our heart in our minds enables us to see the future uh, by faith and uh, go towards that right so a clear vision brings light so what do i do with the vision okay um let's look at habakkuk 2 and verse 2 habakkuk 2 um it's uh, it's interesting what um, what happens in this encounter with god so maybe we'll just read from verse 1 itself in habakkuk 2 and verse 1 i will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what i will answer when i am corrected verse 2 then the lord answered me and said write the vision make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it for the vision is yet for an appointed time at the end it will speak and and so on right other word tarries wait for it it will surely come it will not tarry and um, so so th- this is what uh, the prophet is doing you know he's saying i will position i myself i will i will position myself and i i want to hear what uh, what he has to say to me and uh, with the vision the lord says write it make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it okay and uh, so that is something for us to do for us to capture it for us to write it down for us to put it down and make it plain uh, not complicated uh, not very complex but uh, make it plain make it plain sorry make it plain so that one who reads will understand and the one who reads is also moved to act upon it right um the vision speaks and the vision uh, propels one to action right so it's clear it's precise and it leads one to act on it right uh, the contemporary english version is it's nice it says therefore the lord told me i will give you my mes- message in the form of a vision write it clearly enough to be read at a glance okay so um stating what the vision is and stating what um, uh, god wants us to do so you see that uh, you know when we, when it comes to vision um it it provides direction guidance clarity and uh, and we should be able to state it so that it moves us to action so so we see that vision is tied to our call right a vision is uh, is tied to the call what what call god has for us uh, it is uh, is tied to the call right so uh, let's say a personal life vision it's tied to the call of god uh, upon our lives right so um so i just want us to take this time so maybe to uh, maybe you've already written down what your life vision is okay this is what i believe god has called me to do okay so so let's try putting it down you know in a in maybe in two sentences or three sentences right um and uh, yeah so let's let's try doing that okay, let's take some time um to write uh, so we, we i just want to kind of reiterate the characteristics right it's future looking uh it uh, communicates purpose right and it also has a uh, uh it also provides um, 
uh, guidance it gives direction so it's its purpose is there there is a sense of uh, you know what you want to do so it's future looking and and the third thing is uh, it's you know it gives a call to action right is a call to action so so think of these three elements and um, yeah let's put together and maybe share it so that it can be helpful okay so let's take some time to do this maybe maybe 5 minutes let's uh, write it down Okay so was that easy or difficult challenging um would anyone like to share um okay mentor the young ones for kingdom ministry with integrity thank you kennedy wonderful mentor the young ones okay Mm. Right. So it's got a broad scope, and it also um, describes the purpose. Mentor the young ones for kingdom ministry um, with integrity. Okay. 
Right. Thank you. Anyone? Anyone else? Would you like to try? Okay, Rose, yeah, I'm just reading this. Um, the very first dream I had was I saw a bunch of barley wheat and I heard a voice clearly say the harvest is right. Okay, so um, so is that, you know, has that moved you to, you know, fulfill that? Um, so can you just put that, you know, what God is uh, asking you to do, you know, with that very, the dream or whatever you know that uh, the, you know dream that he showed um, the stirring in your heart for you to be part of it for you to yeah I've okay harvest more for him to be a harvester okay okay mm. Mm. So, yeah, so I guess um, you can continue to ask him for specifics, you know, where, how, when, and, um, you know, and you can put that together, right? So at this, uh, like in this season, at this stage, you know, what is it, you know, how does he want you to move ahead? Uh, in what environment? What is the scope of, you know, what is it? And um, what is he showing you? Um, I remember you shared something. I remember you sharing during the supernatural hour. I think um, yeah, some time back last year. So, um, so maybe you know, get more clarity and and put it together. Right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, anyone else? Okay, so Rose is uh, adding some more um, about uh, catching a small spiny fish and a bigger sized fish and went on until the fish became as big as a whale. Okay, so that's an increasing sphere of influence, right? Um, where the Lord is leading on to bigger things, uh, increasing sphere of influence uh, in ministry, obviously. Uh, it's um, yeah in the purpose of God in the plan of God. Um, uh, you know maybe we can if you if you can relate it to the the previous statement that you put down or the, the previous dream um, to uh, fulfill you know for a bigger harvest continuing to you know go in for a bigger harvest, right? Okay, thank you. So Prabhaka, prepare this generation to meet me. Okay. Um, so Pratik, to start prayer house in my native town for all age groups. Okay, so that would be um, you know the mission, I guess, uh, both Prabhakar and uh, yeah, Prabhakar is more of a you know a general uh, scope. Um, but what Pratik is sharing is uh, is more of a mission, right? Okay, prayer house in my native town for all age groups. Um, it's 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 a mission, you know, what you will do. Uh, and uh, yeah, okay, Prabhaka Rao is sharing, okay, the vision is to reach and preach the gospel and in depth, an in depth revealing of God to the Gentiles across the world. Okay, a mission plant a church, prepare many leaders, uh, targets of youth, children. Okay, wonderful. So, yeah, so you've also uh, mentioned how to reach that vision, right, uh, Prabhaka? That's good. So this is going to be the, uh, these are going to be the objectives, you know, planting a church and preparing the leaders. Uh, so obviously um, uh, planting a church involves outreach, evangelism, um, and then uh, getting the group of believers who are saved and, uh, you know, starting a work of God there and preparing many leaders, raising up leaders um, and from the youth and children, right? Wonderful. Okay. Uh, is there anyone else oh, who can? So Pratik, uh, what you've mentioned is uh, let's um, you know you, it's uh, just like you you know you see the second statement which Prabhaka has put Prabhaka Rao has uh, shared. 
to plant a church prepare many leaders you know so yours is uh, your statement is that you know so start a prayer house in the native town uh, for all age groups right maybe young old maybe even gender wise men women uh, so it's the mission <clears throat> but what is the big picture right so this mission will lead to you know uh, or, or the other way you know the big picture will uh, enable you to do this these small things this daily things but what is the future right so that is what the vision is so it's good to think about that it's good to ask god you know what is that big picture what do you want me to do you know this i will do every day this i will do every month um but god what is that big picture what is it that you you are calling me or calling us uh to carry out and it's good to ask the lord to see that big picture and have that as the vision uh and also try to capture that as a statement um so that you can share with people who will come alongside you know, to help you do that and obviously uh, you said uh, up you said prayer house so uh, maybe one but then what if uh you know the what thing is to multiply and uh, obviously there is a need for more like more than one so maybe many houses of prayer right uh and so yeah so uh, definitely the vision can capture that right so the scope of uh what you're called to do the scope of your calling and uh, of course you're saying in a native town but um uh what does god really want you to do you know does he want you to go beyond the native town um if it's if it's the native town only that's that's also fine but if the scope is beyond the native town um then you can you can have that as well you can uh, put that down and that will also you know give you the direction and guidance so so which means that when you when you start to pray, start the prayer house you know you will also start thinking about okay you know this is good this work is thriving so you know where can i start the next one right we'll you'll start thinking on those lines you'll start praying on those lines and um, and then as the god, as god opens up opportunity you will also start you know start uh, maybe raising up leaders to start on the work there delegating more responsibility uh and you know training those people and so on so um so the, you see the work expanding you see the work multiplying right so so um yeah so it's it's good to have that vision to capture that so that's the importance of the vision that's the importance of the picture right so um so every day you're stirred up you're praying you're stirred up and and you you've reminded of that big picture this is what god has called me to do and uh, it does it doesn't end uh you know with you it that vision is you know it could be big enough to go on to an uh, you know should the lord um, you know come back uh you know should the lord uh, lord's return uh be after you know your lifetime or my lifetime then the vision continues right to the next generation as well so so that's the that's how powerful uh, a vision is and and also the vision statement to capture it so that it's it it gets passed on to the next generation it doesn't have to end with you right okay um mangi starting an organization to support church plants okay so yeah so that's that's nice i think it's it's like a seed uh, you got that seed okay i have to i want to start something to support church plan so you so you can ask the lord, ask god okay what does it go into supporting church plans what goes into supporting church plans um and uh, you know in supporting church plans what is it that you that you want want me to do right and uh, what is what is the end result what is the objective of this um towards what end and and also in terms of support you can think of you know in what way is it financial is it like a spiritual support uh in what way and uh, you know that will give the big picture um for what the organization can it can look towards in in future right so starting an organization to support church plans you know it's it's like it's in seed form just ask the lord you know what is that uh, what is the objective and what do you want us to do god what can be the big vision big picture of this okay 
Um, thank you, Mangi. So, uh, Anita, to reach the hopeless, introduce living hope in Christ. Want to reach out to poor um, people, poor business people, and introduce Christ as a savior in these uh, troubled times. Okay, right. So you you see the need, uh, specific need, um, that is because of the econ economy, maybe, and maybe because of the pandemic and economy that is. Uh, you know, suffering because of that, and then you've seen the need, and uh, you want to reach out and help. Uh, uh, and the big picture can be even beyond that. Like, like you said, to reach the hopeless, introducing living hope in Christ. And uh, and one of that stream, one of that aspect, one aspect of that is obviously this, where you want to reach to the poor uh, and the business community, um, so that they can lean on Him and. Uh, Obviously, their hope being revived and uh, receive wisdom and strategy from the Lord, and and go forward. Right. So uh, that is that's good. Like um, obviously, I, I I'm not able to envision you know. how big this can be, and and so obviously it can be it can be huge. Right? It can be huge. Everything starts small, but the vision can be huge, uh, and it can be global as well. It's to reach hopeless, introducing living hope in Christ. So I, I'm sure you'll be able to fine tune, you know, that statement itself and also the scope of, you know, uh, the hopelessness, you know, what what is the scope of that hopelessness and what are the areas of that hopelessness and uh, which are the hopeless uh, or, um, which, you know, what kind of a condition, hopeless condition is the Lord asking you to uh, address? Right. Obviously, it need, need not be everything, but what is that uh, that he's calling you to address apart from the business community, right? Um, so that can um, that can be good if you can capture that. Okay, so Samuel, Sam, um, build a spiritual community of believers and together pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, uh, seeking that is trusting and calling on God with pure hearts. Okay. Right, build a spiritual community of believers. Okay, so um, so Sam, would this would this be a church? Would this be a church? Would this be a, a, I mean a network of churches? Um, what do you think? What do you sense in your heart? Um, is uh, Sam here? I'm I'm here, Pastor. Sam, yeah, yeah, okay, Sam, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sam. So that that that's the that's the part that I'm not clear about. I, I don't yet. Um, so it's, mm. it's yeah. So it doesn't. It when I imagine, I see more like just a group of people sitting on plastic chairs in mm. a small circle and just uh, meeting every day. And um, so almost like a church format, but not really. Mm. Uh, much mm. smaller, definitely not uh, a big, but small. And I, I see pockets, uh, kind of like uh, cell groups, Pastor. Mm. Uh, cell groups, but really interconnected um, and um, together, like uh, interconnected and unified. Right. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah, a spiritual community of believers. Um, you know, we... we of course, you know, I recently came across uh, something like this, but they're doing this online uh, and based out of, you know, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, uh, doing this online, the whole, I mean, this community of believers or this fellowship happens online, but it's, uh, yeah, since it's online, it's cutting across, uh, you know, denominations and churches and so on. So, yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Sam. So, uh, Avni, um, vision is to preach the whole truth to all Gentiles. Um, mission, share the truth that sets them free. So, obviously, uh, uh, preaching the gospel. Um, yeah. So, vision to preach the whole truth to on all Gentiles. Okay. Um, that's good. So, um, so young, old youth you know that is um, that is one thing to ask the lord you know uh, is it uh, 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 you know a spectrum of all demographics like uh, right from the oldest to the youngest and you know is it uh, something like that 
um, and also to ask the Lord, uh, you know, this, yeah, so one is the, you know, the demographic of it. And uh, also to be, you know, to ask the Lord for some specifics, right? You know, um, obviously our mind goes to, uh, when you say no, all Gentiles, we, you're talking about, um, it was not the non-Jewish, but then, you know, we're talking about unbelievers, right? Those who do not know the Lord, I guess that's what you're referring to. So um, to reaching the to reach the unreached and so you can ask the lord in what way in what form um you know what is it that you want me to do um so there there are some some more specifics right so um you know is it in a systematic manner is it in a you know like a formal church kind of a setting is it like a bible study kind of a thing or you know even like um, is it like a home like a like a you know like a orphanage or a or a you know a elderly some home for the elderly is it something like that? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. So thank you, thank you for asking that because this is what uh, God has given me in a dream as well as vision. Uh, okay. Old age home mm -hmm. and uh, reaching out to the people like uh, who've lived a very good life but they are not aware of the truth. Of God's mm. so that mm. is one thing and uh, uh, through dream and the the verse that God gave me second Timothy 4 17 mm. Mm. Uh, which God gave me out of which this vision comes I see uh, let me just uh, look at that verse second Timothy 4 17 is it okay it says um, um, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be fully preached is that the one I'm sorry um, yeah yes pastor so that all Gentiles might hear, yeah, and I was, uh, yeah, delivered from the mouth of the lion, so, right. Okay, thank you, right, Dhamni, thanks. Okay, so Kennedy, to be a world class manufacturer and ISO compliant, okay, right, so world class manufacturer, obviously, um, you're talking about certain products, and uh, or maybe manufacturers so obviously it's products or service um, it's you're talking about some product and ISO compliant uh, right so so with regard to your organization you can also talk about what will you know you can also I mean uh, ask the Lord to give you the inspiration what will actually set you apart what will make your organization unique um, so you know the values that will go into it you know that will be the second layer like you uh, you, uh, you talk about the vision of course and all the values that drive that vision um so you know what will be the uh, what will be the unique uniqueness that your organization will carry um and bring right? bring to the uh, your client so yeah so that's good um so obviously you you know what it is you know the what are the things that you're going to be manufacturing for whom you're manufacturing um and at what standards of course you've met iso you said iso um yeah and there's so many other things to you know pray and ask the lord and uh, yeah um so is it only manufacturing or uh, is it something else you know so when you say manufacturing you're obviously you're you're limiting it to you know your expertise right now uh, and uh, you're saying okay this is what we will do so it can be it can be something beyond that also right so yeah that's good uh abinas to be a true worshiper of the father and spread good news into the city with the power of worship okay something on the lines of worship to to worship uh, the Father in spirit and truth, and to spread the good news with the power of worship. Okay, right. Wonderful. Yeah, you can even talk about the presence of God, the power of God, leading people to an encounter with God. I mean, and that's just my opinion. But of course, if this is what you strongly sense, um, you just need to kind of refine that and go with it. Right. Uh, hosting the presence of God facilitating people to come and be in the presence of god encounter god in his power um, 
etc you know all those things uh, are also part of uh, when you say power of worship i'm just uh, you know, thinking about that okay okay we'll stop here we'll come back after a break and continue thank you <laughs>